Okay. All right. Well, welcome everyone to our first ever writing workshop at the Texas Conference on Digital Libraries. My name is Leah DeForest. I use she, her pronouns, and I'm the communications manager with Texas Digital Library and a member of our planning committee. I'm really pleased to be your session moderator today. So I have some housekeeping first. Texas Digital Library and the TCDL planning committee are dedicated to providing an experience for you all that is free from all forms of harassment and inclusive of all people. So we ask that everyone here today, please be considerate and respectful in speech and action, attempt collaboration before conflict, refrain from demeaning discriminatory or harassing behavior and speech, and please be mindful of your environment and your fellow participants. And I'm gonna drop a link to chat where you can view our code of conduct. Oops, that's the wrong link. I have everything on my clipboard except the thing I need today, apparently. Um, there we go. This session will run until um, approximately 1.50. So you'll have time to reset before the 2 p.m. presentations begin. And please feel free to take breaks as you need. We don't have an official break time set up for this session. I invite you all to say hello and let us know where you're joining from say hello in chat, share resources, and engage with today's discussion. I'll be keeping an eye in chat for any questions that come up for us to ask um, Ursula at the end. And now on with the show. I'm really pleased to introduce my colleague, Ursula Pike, who is the Associate Director of the Digital Higher Education Consortium of Texas. She is a published author and a creative writing instructor with Austin Community College. I'm gonna hand things over to you, Ursula, to get started. Great. Thank you so much, Leah, and thank you everybody for coming. I'm really excited. Um, when I was approached about doing this, I, I, it really gave me a chance to sit down and, and think what might be an effective presentation for this, for this conference. So I am gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right. Um, can everyone see that? Yes. Okay, great, great. Um, all right. So this session is called Creative Writing. Imperfection is encouraged. As Leah said, my name is Ursula Pike, and I am a creative writing instructor. I teach at Austin Community College, and I do some other workshops uh, around town. I'm the author of An Indian Among Los Indígenas, a native travel memoir that came out last year from Heyday Books. It's about two years that I spent as a Peace Corps volunteer in Bolivia, South America. And honestly, most of that book was written in a library. Um, we'll have a conversation. I'll ask you later about wh what spaces you find comfortable to write in. But for me, that's, that's one of my number one places I, I love to write. Uh, I have an MFA in creative nonfiction from the Institute of American Indian Affairs, uh, Indian Arts in, um, in Santa Fe, New Mexico. So I know some of you are already, uh, have already introduced yourself um, and please keep doing that, uh, telling us where you're from. I would like to know, what do you like to read? And we're all so busy sometimes that we, we, most of us don't have a lot of time to read. And so I'll ask you, what do you make time to, to read? I know um, Debbie Hathaway says all genres. That's great. I think that's, that's really important to read all kinds of different stuff. Because um, even though I focus on memoir and personal essays, I of course love, uh, novels, and um, but also some more technical nonfiction. Horror and YA, that's great. Leah says fiction. Oh, fantasy and management books, <laughs> one and the same. Yeah, that's right, that's right. A lot of folks say that they're reading nonfiction. That 
That's great. I, I think there's so much exciting stuff happening in nonfiction. Um, historical fiction, yes, that's exciting too. Um, fiction, magical realism, yes. I don't know how people write magical realism. I have some good friends who write it and, and it it's, takes skills beyond what I have as a writer. So it's really helpful. Um, investigative journalism, that is exciting too. Uh, all of these different types of genres can inform our writing. And I think it's really important to read as widely as possible. So as I said, the title of this uh, talk is Imperfection Encouraged. Many people, writers and non-writers alike, are afraid to write anything because they're afraid of writing something that's bad. And you know, not everyone is a writer. I have many people in my life who, who struggle to write um, for work or for school. Um, but the thing I always tell them, the thing I tell my students and, and I tell others is that you just, you have to start and everybody starts somewhere. Um, and I think it's important to remember that um, you kind of have to get messy at the beginning. That's one thing that really, that really helps me, frees me up um, to, to move forward. You know, I was lucky enough to be in the second graduating class that at the Institute uh, of American Indian Arts, their MFA program, and there were amazing poets and writers and screenwriters, um, many of whom have gone on to win national and international awards, um, become best-selling authors, be nominated for award prizes. Um, and every semester we would share our, our work and um, in a reading group, we'd get together and just kind of read our stuff. Um, and was everything that everybody shared amazing? Not always. Um, and even though these people have, are amazing writers, um, sometimes those, that early work was not as amazing. You know, you could see the spark, you could um, see that there was something there, but, but everybody struggles in the beginning. And also, as somebody who has published a book, I saw how much work goes into the, the, when you have the book, when you have the rough draft, and then the thing that ends up on the bookshelves. There's so many people who contribute, who support that work, who editing, developmental editing, copy editing, all along the way. And I just think it's important to kind of help people understand that that what you read on the page in a published book has had a lot of work. So you shouldn't be intimidated when you're writing and think I have to have something that looks like that book on the shelf. Start wherever you can, wherever you are. So when we think about writing the writing process, a lot of people think that this is how it works that you spend a little bit of time pre-writing, maybe like the time that it takes you to make your coffee and sit down in front of your computer. In that time, you come up with your ideas. And then you spend the majority, the vast majority of your time actually writing that first draft and then a little bit of time on revision. I wanna ask you now to put into the, um, into the chat what do you think are, is a more realistic writing process? How much time do you think um, writers generally do pre-writing, writing, and then revising? One, two, 20% <laughs> revising. Yeah, yeah, three, a th broken down into threes, that's, that's good, 20, someone said 20% pre-writing, 40% writing, revising, that's, that's really close, 20, 20, 60, yes, yes, it looks like you guys understand that that is, that is a myth. Um, here is some data, of course, it's subjective, I, I don't know that I even track exactly how much time um, I spent, but this is something, uh, an article that I was reading said is 
and, and I agree with this because this tends to be my experience that um, when I, I spend about 20% pre-writing and then about 30% writing the first draft but the vast majority of my time is spent in the revision. And I think that that's really important to, to realize that it's okay that, um, that you spend so much time in revision. You know, that's how you take that, that lump of clay that is your first attempt and make it into something. So, um, I like to show this to people who, who want to write, because I think sometimes, um, even when they see those numbers about how much time we spend pre-writing and writing, they, they still don't understand that it's a, you know, it's an iterative process. I really like this outline um, of the writing process from an openly licensed book called The Rough Writer's Guide. Uh, people are often intimidated by the writing process, so it, I think it's just important to understand that uh, there are many steps in it, and, um, and they go backwards and forwards. If you notice, those arrows are two-sided, and I, I've just found that this, and sometimes there are years between each of these steps, so it's, it's a process for sure. All right, so we're going to do a writing exercise and I'm not going to ask you to read the examples of what you write when you're done. Um, I know some people, especially when you're just producing something on the fly, get nervous about doing that. I know I do <laughs> um, and often don't volunteer to read my, my stuff that I write in an online class. So, um, but, I think it's still a good exercise to do. So we're, this is inspired by the work of Linda Berry. Um, she has an exercise that's on YouTube, but then also in uh, some of her craft books that she writes called Writing the Unthinkable. So Linda Berry is a cartoonist and an author and a teacher. She's best known for her weekly comic strip, Ernie Pooks, Camp Comique. Um, when I was growing up in Washington State, her uh, she was going to Evergreen in in Washington State, and um, and there were her comics were published in the local alternate alternative weeklies, and um, I just loved them. They were messy and and really um, truthful. And so now she's a professor at the University of Wisconsin at Madison. And actually last year she won a MacArthur Genius Grant. Uh, she has many great books and um, let's see if I can get that. Oh yeah. So one of them that I love is called Syllabus and it just talks about what she does in her class and um, how she inspires students. She has several other um, books that she's published after, after this one, um, this one's a couple of years old, but I think uh, it's, her books are great resources. I have a good friend of mine who's a librarian at Arizona State University. And she says that these books just help her tap into her creativity that she hasn't had time to focus on for a long time and just really loves them. So the writing exercise. So I want you to start by finding something to write and to draw with. So you can either um, use a pen and a paper or pencil or crayon or whatever, and or you could use a computer. You can use Word or Pages or Google Doc or you know, any of the million apps that allow you to, to write. So does everybody have something? I see, oh, I see some Linda Berry fans in the, in the chat, that's great. All right. I'm gonna go ahead. So this is how we start this writing exercise, the unthinkable, writing the unthinkable. So I want you to start by drawing a tight circle. Go around and around and 
the only rule is to try not to touch the other parts of the other lines. If you do, you'll be shocked. No, you won't really, but um, I think that helps just to focus your attention on drawing that circle. Um, and as you're doing that, I want you to pay attention to your breathing. So put all of your attention, if you can, on the muscles in your face. And then focus your attention on your neck. Now think about your chest. Think about the muscles in your shoulders. Go down, think about the muscles, if you can, in your right arm. Go down, think about the muscles in your left arm. Again, keep circling, keep drawing your circle. Then if you can feel your stomach, focus on the sensations of your stomach. Keep drawing that circle. If you can feel your left leg, focus on the sensation of your leg. Then focus on the sensations in your right leg. Where is your body touching the chair? Think about that. Where's your body touching the floor? And breathe. All right. So that's just a little mindfulness exercise to kind of put us in the mood for, for writing. Um, so now, that you have something to write with. I'm going to tell you a word and I want you to list everything you can think of associated with that word for one minute. Here we go. The word is chair. So I want you to think about chairs like the chair you're sitting in, maybe the chair um, that your grandfather used maybe a chair, a high chair, um, a chair you saw at Goodwill, just any kind of, any, all these chairs. Think about chairs, just make a list of chairs. And let's see if I can, yes. So just list down these, these different chairs. So I'm gonna start a one minute timer. I'll tell you in 30 seconds. So go ahead and write about all different chairs you can think of. All right, we're at 30 seconds. You have 30 seconds more. All right, we're at one minute. Finish writing the word that you're writing. So now, um, there are many steps in this, in this exercise, but I promise you we'll get to the, the actual writing soon. So if you take that paper and pen, I want you to take another piece of paper or another sheet on your Google Doc um, and draw an X on it. We're going to, I'm going to be asking you some questions about these chairs. Um, and I just want you to write wherever on the X. Now, if you have a Google doc or word or something, just create a, a four by a two by two table. And I'm going to have you just write randomly on there. The goal, the reason why we do this X and this square is because you know that if there's an X or a square, uh, you're not trying to write a long sentence. It, it really um, kind of tricks you into understanding that these are 
a couple of words or bullet points or whatever. You're, you don't have to make it pretty. And it doesn't matter where you put anything. It's just, I want you to record some, some thoughts. So I want you to take that list of chairs that you made. And I want you to pick one to write about, anyone, because they all probably have super interesting stories. Um, if you can't decide which one, then just pick the third one. So I'm going to ask you some questions about that chair. And you can write single words. You don't have to write complete sentences. This is for you and put it anywhere on the, on the page. So I'm going to ask a question and take a second and you can write down. So the first question is, what is the chair made of? What material? What color is that chair? What does it feel like, the chair, when you touch it? Is it an old chair or a new chair? What does the room where the chair is smell like? And where is the chair in the room? Is the chair a good fit for the person who is sitting in it? Is there anything on the side of the chair, like a lamp or a table? And if so, what's on that table? How about in front of the chair? Is there anything like an ottoman? What is underneath the chair? Is it carpet? Is it cement? What time of day is this chair in your imagination? Is it in the morning, the afternoon, is it nighttime? Who owns the chair? Where is this chair in the world, geographically? City, state? If someone were sitting in the chair, what would they see in front of themselves? All right, I'm gonna give you 30 more seconds to write anything else that you wanna write about this chair. All right, we are at 30 seconds. So now comes the writing part of this writing exercise. That was all pre-writing. Uh, we're going to take five minutes, and I want you to write about that chair or that scene where that chair is that you just described. You just came up with a ton of details that are going to inform your writing. So write about um, any moment associated with this chair in this place. And I want you to begin by telling me where you are and use the sentence, the, the beginning, I am. So again, I'm going to set five minutes and I want you to write about the chair. And if you end up writing something different about the lamp next to the chair, that's fine. I just want you to, this was to jog your, your creativity. 
Okay, I'll tell you when two minutes have passed, but go ahead, start. It's been two minutes, so you have about three more minutes. Just under a minute left. All right, if you can start wrapping up the sentence that you're working on right now. 
we're about to move on. All right, so hopefully that was a good experience for you. I know sometimes that five minutes can feel like the longest five minutes in the world or the shortest five minutes in the world or somewhere in between, depending on um, how inspired we're, we're feeling in that moment. And that's okay if you weren't feeling particularly inspired. You know, sometimes um, we have other things or our energy just doesn't um, make it a great time, but it's still good to sit down and, and write. So I wanted to reflect on this writing process, this diagram that I had shown you that um, you know we just did pre-writing. We did brainstorming um, and then we did some writing. And so you can go back and do some more pre-writing. You could keep writing. Um, I just think that this is a is a way that you can move forward if there's something that you want to write about. I know, you know, I have used this exact process to write essays that I then later ended up getting published. And um, it was a way for me to kind of think, oh, what do I want to say about this thing? And, and it just was very raw and messy at first, but that was the first step that I had to take to, to get to writing that. Um, so I want to now I want to reflect on this experience. I see somebody has um, has posted their writing in here. Oh, that's great. Thank you for sharing that. Uh, don't anybody you don't feel you don't have to feel um, obliged to do that. I think that that's great that you that you did that, though. Um, I wanted to have you to re have you reflect on this experience a little bit. Uh, you know, we just did this really intensive pre-writing and drafting exercise, and I wanted you to tell me um, in the chat if you had a hard time with any part of this exercise. If you can think about what it was and maybe why it was, what, what step? Was it just thinking of an initial chair or was it thinking of details about the chair? Was it hard to remember? Were there some details that you're like, I'm not exactly sure what the color was of the chair? Was there anything that, about this that was, was challenging? Please let me know. All right, I don't see anybody posting anything. Please, please put it in there and, or think about it yourself. If there was anything in this process um, that kind of hung you up the most, um, let me know. Pre-writing, Susan says, wanting to edit my writing during the five minutes. I know, I know. That is something that I, I also feel that same way. Um, it was hard to actually try to write about the details I had brainstormed. Yeah, I had a hard time focusing on my body and breathing. Yeah, for sure. I know we're like always in such a hurry and, um, and, you know, that's just a really short uh, body scan that, that we do, and it, it doesn't always, it isn't always enough. But now I want to ask you, uh, what do you usually need to write? What do you find that you need to write? As I said, for me, I need a space like a library to, to write. I need to be surrounded by books. Um, I find it particularly inspiring to sit by really bad books and think, wow, that book got published. Maybe I have hope to get more of mine published. But um, I also just love the quiet. And then there's, um, if I have to get distracted, there's usually a book for me to read. And reading is always a great distraction. Um, and of course, the librarians are always so helpful. And, and they're just wonderful spaces to write in. I know other people love to go to coffee shops and write. And, but what about you? What do you need to write? Do you just need time? Can you write anywhere? Some people can, can write on a plane. I, I could never, I can't do that unless I'm in the seat by myself. A topic, Susan said, I like silence or I'm distracted. Yes, yes, me too. I, I do too. And that's good to know. And that's totally um, legitimate, you know, to, to recognize that that's the thing that you need. Other people 
uh, can listen to music. I like the outdoors, Julie says. The outdoors can be really inspiring. I, I like public places with ambiance, like coffee shops. Um, I find it easier to write in the morning. That is a great observation. You know, I also find it easy to write in the morning, but then sometimes at 10 p.m. I'm incredibly inspired to write something. And the work that comes out at 10 p.m. is different than the than the 7.30 a.m. I like a quiet space. Birds and squirrels are too distracting. Yes, yes. Uh, all of these are great. And it's good just to think about what kind of space you find uh, inspires your creativity. And, um, and it looks like you've already answered that next question. What environment is more conducive to writing? Yes, uh, Ian said, I also like to switch between mental and physical work pretty regularly. Yeah, I think that that's especially important when we're um, in our offices or in whether we're home working from home or in the office and we're looking at a computer screen all day. It's really important to do something very differently. There's an amazing poet I know who teaches at IAI and um, and he just goes hiking all the time and um, his poetry is, is beautiful and it reflects that natural world. And even though he's teaching online and writing, um, those moments out in, in the country really help him focus on his writing. So definitely. Um, all right. So in addition to just knowing what we need, I think that there are resources that we can call on outside of ourselves. And as librarians, I know you guys are really good at identifying resources for people. And if you want to write, you can identify resources for yourself. Um, and I'm going to list a few, but if you have other resources that you use that help you with your writing, that would be great. Please post them in the chat and share them with everyone. Uh, there are organizations here in Austin, like the Austin Bat Cave and Texas Writers League. They offer workshops and events, many of which are free um, and are virtual, and more and more are happening in person, where you can just um, learn a little, about, a little bit about different parts of writing. And of course, if you work at an institution, I know many of us are fortunate to be able to take a class a semester, um, at least at Austin Community College, that's the case. And I, I think that's the case at some of the other institutions. Um, I find that, you know, those classes are really helpful in just kind of the deadlines, establishing deadlines. A lot of times people will take my class and say, I can write. I feel like I know the technical things about writing, but I just can't find time for it. So they take a class and, you know, the first essay is due within two weeks and they have to get those thousand words out. And that always helps me. And I know it helps a lot of people. So sometimes taking those classes, it's less about what you will, what the topic is, and more just that there's some deadlines and structure around your writing. Um, and of course, there's tons of online courses, uh, creative nonfiction magazine, they offer courses, um, and whatever, ma many magazines now have online courses, some of which are super affordable, like $25. So that, that's something I'd encourage you to, to check out. You can meet up with other writers on that, um, either through Writers League of Texas or just classes or different things. There's ways to informal meetups uh, with other writers. And I find that's really helpful to talk, to talk to people and to have someone to share your writing with, share your experience of writing and the challenges of it. Um, and then, as I said, uh, classes at your institution or others in the state. And then, of course, craft writing books like Syllabus that I mentioned by Linda Berry. She has others. But there are a lot of craft writing books. The thing that's exciting to me is that, yes, there are general ones um, for creative nonfiction or fiction, but there's also really specific ones about screenwriting or if you want to learn specifically how to write about setting. There, there are craft books specifically about setting. So I, I just 
we encourage you to look at that. And then writing magazines. You know, one of the most important things that I, one of the most important resources for me is JSTOR. There are many magazines like uh, Fourth Genre and Writer's Digest and Poets and Writers that are available um, through JSTOR or through your library um, to which have great essay, have great articles on writing craft and, and interviews with authors talking about how they did something. How did they write about a person that they didn't remember very well? So are there any other resources that, that you use, that you have found help you? One I didn't put on here, which I find is really useful to me, is Poets and Writers Magazine has a weekly email. Um, yeah, Stephen King says read a lot for sure. He has a he has a good book craft book called On Writing. Um, there's a Poets and Writers Magazine will send you writing prompts, so. They have something called the time is now and they send out every week prompts they'll send out a poetry prompt a fiction prompt and a creative writing uh, creative nonfiction prompt um oh yes leah says write letters to old friends yes i think that that that's great that is wonderful people love that i love it i love to get them and i love to send them for sure but writing prompts from from poets and writers or other resources, other books that are just writing prompts or, or websites that have prompts are really helpful, uh, I find. And sometimes the poetry prompt, even though I don't really write a lot of poetry, sometimes the poetry prompt inspires me. Um, so I just really encourage you. I think that there's a lot of resources out there. If you're looking for a topic, as somebody said, um, these writing prompts can really help you. Before I open it up for any questions, I just want to make sure that um, I point out that this slide deck, which I love, is from Slide uh, Slides Carnival, and it's uh, available. It's from Jimena Catalina, and it is called Composition Book, I think. Uh, the template, template is free to use and has a Creative Commons attribution license. But now I would like to ask anyone if you have any questions or any responses even um, to what you wrote or to this experience, um, please let me know. Please, you can unmute yourself and, and let me know. I have really enjoyed this experience. I'm a, I love librarians and I love, <laughs> uh, I just have really appreciated this opportunity to talk to you. Susan said, I really enjoyed the centering ex exercise. This was fun. Thank you for sharing. Helpful. I like thinking about the chair and then all of the details and trying to write about it. Good exercise. Yes. And, um, and I will you can find that exercise that like it's about a 20 minute video that Linda Berry does this writing the unthinkable um, and she has a different word that she uses I've seen other people do it slightly differently but um, oh what was the x or the four square box for oh I don't think I explained that very well so when I was asking you all of those questions about where in the room is the chair what's beside the chair I just meant for you to put that in either the X or the four square box because. Um, that way you don't feel like you're you have to make it look pretty you can just you know write one thing on one side and one thing on the other. Um, what would be a good next step for us after the five minute writing exercise, I would definitely recommend if you if you liked that then to to check out some of uh, Linda Berry's other books, that either book syllabus or um, she has several that that kind of cover slightly differently the same topic, 
Um, and, and I think those have some really good exercises. One exercise that she has that I love and I try and do all the time is a seven minute daily diary where she draw, where you draw a box and you, um, put an X in it, similar to that four square box that I had you draw. And on one side you write for like two minutes, what you did something, things that you did, just sentences, walked to the store, ate a bagel, blah, blah, blah. And then on the next side, square, you write things that you saw. You spend another two minutes just writing things that you saw, a dog, you know, just whatever. And then at the bottom left-hand square, you write something that you heard. And this is the hardest one, um, because if you're not listening to what people say, if you're not in that practice, it's hard to remember, oh, what did somebody exactly say? And it doesn't have to be exact, but, but once you start writing down every day or every other day, some word or phrase that somebody said, um, you start paying attention. And then when someone says it, you're like, oh, I'm going to use that next tomorrow as my word that I overheard. And then in the in the bottom right hand box is a question like what's on your mind or it could be what am I going to have for dinner or what do I want to be when I grow up you know it can be a small question or a big question and that is in that syllabus book and and uh, I just find that it's really quick it just takes a couple minutes but it's a it's a really good way to kind of keep details or to keep start noticing details and writing it down Anyway, um, I see we're at 148. Um, yeah, I will, I've shared uh, with Leah the, the links, the link to my power, to this PowerPoint presentation. I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, it's not a PowerPoint, it's Google Slides. Um, I'm gonna uh, share that, I'll share that link. Oh yes, it looks like Leah had. So you're welcome to, um, use some of those resources. And I just encourage everybody to keep writing. Um, it, it really helps me. I mean, I wrote for years and years and years before I ever got anything published. Um, we focus so much on trying to get something published and it's just such a helpful experience for me for dealing with my life and the world. So if there, if I'm gonna look back, are there any other questions? Oh yeah, I see Catherine says that uh, Linda Berry also shares lessons on her Instagram account. Yes, I've seen those from, from time to time. All right, well, thank you everyone. Um, yes, writing is as good as therapy. It can be very therapeutic for sure. All right, well, I hope you guys have a great rest of your uh, session or great rest of your workshop. And um, uh, maybe I'll see some of you in some of the other sessions, but thank you so much for coming today. And um, yeah, keep writing. Thanks, Ursula. That was fa fabulous, just what I needed. I really appreciate you. I'm gonna go ahead and stop recording now. <laughs>